Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, I want to tell you today about the Cortex-A78C uh, CPU design which ARM has announced in the last few days. Now there are three main differences between the Cortex-A78 and the Cortex-A78C. And if you want to find out what they are, please let me explain. Okay, so the Cortex A78 was announced this year and we're hoping to see it in devices for smartphones from Qualcomm, from Samsung, uh, starting in December and then into the early part of next year. And we expect those to be powering the flagship devices of 2021. However, the 78C, the C kind of stands for compute, for computing power. So this device isn't aimed so much at uh, smartphones and small mobile devices, it's aimed more at larger mobile devices. So for example, laptops, Chromebooks, even handheld uh, gaming consoles. Now the Cortex A78C is different in three ways, as I said. The first is it can't be coupled with the Cortex A55. So in a flagship smartphone, you might see four Cortex A78 cores, well, don't worry about the X1, I've got videos covering all of that, of course. But let's say four Cortex A78 cores and then four Cortex A55 cores. In this case, you're only going to get just Cortex A78C cores and probably at least six up to eight. So imagine a, a laptop processor, a Chromebook processor that's got eight Cortex A78C uh, CPUs in it, no Cortex A55 running at maybe as much as 3 gigahertz, let's say 3.1 gigahertz, the bigger battery that you get inside of a laptop, even inside of a tablet that you can have compared to, let's say, uh, in a smartphone, you've got that extra power, you've got that extra heat dissipation because you've got a bigger chassis, quicker way to get rid of the heat. So you can create yourself quite a powerhouse, but for large screen devices rather than for smaller screen devices. And the second difference is not only is it going to be a six or an eight core without a little core, you can also have up to uh, eight megabytes of L3 cache. Now, why is that important? Important for two reasons. One is that the Cortex A78, normal Cortex A78, can only go up to four megabytes of uh, L3 cache. And of course, L3 cache covers the whole, all of the CPU cores together. But not only that, when you've got lots of big CPU cores, and of course, you're looking at maybe uh, memory bandwidth intensive applications, lots of stuff going on, gaming for example, lots of chatting back and forth on the system buses to the GPU and all that kind of stuff and having that extra larger L3 cache really helps and of course because you've now got more CPUs you have to have a larger cache so they each get a significant chunk of that cache to allow them to maintain that big uh, performance. So more cores, bigger cache to help the performance of those cores. And then the third difference is an architectural one, technically a bit. The Cortex-A78 is actually an ARM V8.2 uh, architecture. And the uh, A78C has got some features that you find in ARM V8.3, even up to ARM V8.6. So they've kind of taken some of the features, and these are made to do with security, the way different things with memory addresses and pointers in memory, which can stop certain types of attack. Don't worry about it. It makes things like a Windows laptop or a Chromebook more secure when you're doing all of your online stuff, less susceptible to being attacked by certain types of um, memory attack that we've seen over the last few years, Spectra, Meltdown, all that kind of stuff. Okay, and they've also so taken those features and brought it into the A78C, which is great, of course, if you're talking about businesses, enterprise, you can say, look, this processor offers these certain types of features, which makes it secure for whatever it is that you want to do. And also it gives us an indication of where ARM is going with its in-house CPUs. Remember, I've just done a video about ARM's upcoming CPUs, including Matterhorn, if you remember. And this kind of gives an indication that these things are, are coming along and that we're gonna see what maybe V8.3, uh, 8.4 kind of devices from ARM, chips from ARM, because uh, they're not going to be making one, of course, that's less feature rich than a previous generation. And we know that Matterhorn is going to be quite a pivotal point for the internal chips that the chips are in house that ARM designed. So if you don't know about Matterhorn, do go and watch that video. Now we know this chip has been sent to ARM's partners. That means they are working on incorporating it into their own processors. 
And of course, there will be other bits of technology around just the CPU design, most importantly, the GPU. So it could be used with GPUs from NVIDIA. So for example, we could have a chip from NVIDIA that's got their a GPU in it, and it's got the Cortex A78 in it. And then of course, that could be in something like, you know, the Nintendo Switch 2, wouldn't that be a nice idea? Or it'd be a new entrant into to that market. It of course could be combined with uh, the GPU from AMD who are working with Samsung now to try and put their latest GPU into a smartphone. We probably won't see that announced until 2021, but of course that could be combined again using a Windows a laptop or even a Chromebook. And of course it can be combined with the Mali GPU itself. So that of course could be used. And then if Qualcomm take this up, of course they've got that Adreno. So you understand this can be combined with all kinds of different types of technology. You've got PCI buses, you've got, uh, you know, all the USB, Wi-Fi, all that stuff that can get built into these chips to give you a complete solution for a laptop, tablet, gaming console, handheld gaming console, or, or for a Chromebook. And we'll see devices probably sometime within the next 12 months. My guess is in fact, probably sometime during the summer of 2021. That would be really interesting to see what we can have with the Cortex A78 clocked at, as I said, three gigahertz, something like that. That could be quite an interesting powerhouse combined with a good GPU that could be really open up the whole market for Windows on ARM, the Chromebooks and so on. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, well, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.